we would like to compute the surface area of the part of the saddle surface C equals XY contained inside the cylinder X squared plus Y squared equals 1. So our piece of surface is inside the cylinder of radius 1, which I'm just going to sketch it kind of like, looks a little bit like a disk. Okay, that's not a great picture of Z equals XY, but this is the idea. We want to compute the area of the saddle surface trapped inside of the cylinder. So the first thing we need to do to set up this computation is parametrize this surface piece. We'll say R of U and V is, we're going to describe this using cylindrical coordinates. So namely, X will be U cosine V, Y will be U sine V, and then Z is X times Y. So we're just going to take those coordinates and multiply them together to get U squared cosine V sine V. Now, if we're looking at the X and Y coordinates, U is like our radius inside this disk. So since we have a solid disk here, we're going to fill in the disk from zero out to the edge by letting U go from zero to one. And then since we have a full revolution, theta is between zero and two pi. To proceed with the surface area computation, we now need to differentiate this parametrization with respect to u and with respect to v. So we can say r subscript u is going to be cosine v sine v to u cosine v sine v. Then the partial derivative of this parametrization with respect to v is going to give us the rv vector. And this is going to be negative u sine v, u cosine v. And then here we have to do the product rule. So that's going to be u squared cosine squared v minus u squared sine squared v. OK, let me now write down the formula for the surface area as a surface integral. So the surface area we can compute by doing a surface integral of 1 ds. In computational form, that's going to be double integrate over the domain d for the parameters, 1 times the length of ru cross rv du db or dv du if you have to, but I'm just going to write du dv. All right, we have r sub u, r sub v. We need to cross them and compute the length. OK, so first, what is this cross product of these two vectors down in the lower left corner? As I do this, I'm actually going to pull one copy of u out of rv. So let me write u out front. And then it's going to be sine v times this third coordinate. Uh, for shorthand, because we're going to have a lot of trig functions before we do some simplification, I'm going to write capital C for cosine v and capital S for sine of v. I hope that's not confusing, but I think it will save room. So our first coordinate will be u capital S capital C squared minus u s cubed. And then from that, we need to subtract the third coordinate here, 2u cosine v sine v times u cosine v. I factored out one of the u's, so that's going to be minus 2u cosine squared sine. OK, let me just pause and check myself. OK, for the next component, it's going to be 2u cosine v sine v times negative u sine v. That's the first part of our cross product computation. I pulled a u out, so that's going to be negative 2u cosine v sine squared v. Whoops, I've got to subtract from that. Cosine v times, after factoring out the u, u cosine squared v minus u sine squared v. It should look fairly similar to the first coordinate. So if you do a term by term comparison, you'll see that we have u sine cosine squared. Here we have u cosine sine squared. Here we have a negative u sine cubed. Here we have a negative u cosine cubed. 
and then here we have negative 2u cosine squared sine. Here we have negative 2u sine uh, cosine sine squared. There's going to be a lot of simplification with this trig, so don't give up. We're using cylindrical coordinates to describe a region inside a cylinder. So whenever you see that, you should expect to have simplifications of the form cosine squared of v plus sine squared of v equals 1. So these will get simpler. The third coordinate is already pretty nice. After factoring out the u, it's going to be cosine squared minus negative sine squared. Or in other words, cosine squared plus sine squared, which is 1. OK, let's make one round of simplification for the first two coordinates and see what that leaves us with. We have here u sine cosine squared and here negative 2u cosine squared sine. So those can combine. And likewise, we can combine negative 2u cosine sine squared with u cosine sine squared. OK, so overall, that's going to be negative u sine cubed minus u cosine squared sine. And then for the second coordinate, we'll have negative u cosine cubed minus u cosine sine squared. And then we still have 1 in the third coordinate. In the first coordinate, let me rewrite this as negative u sine times sine squared plus cosine squared. OK, you can see what happened there. And then analogously in the second coordinate, that's negative u cosine times cosine squared plus sine squared. And then 1 in the third coordinate. OK, so now let me write what I think is the nicest presentation of this cross product. And I will stop this shorthand for cosine and sine. I think it makes it uh, easier to save room and a little harder to read. So our cross product is the scalar u times negative u sine of v, negative u cosine of v, 1. Where here I've used the fact that cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1 for both of those first two coordinates. We need the length of this. Let me shrink what's in the lower left corner. OK, now we can say that the length of this cross product, ru cross rv, which is going to go into our integrand, is the length of this vector just above. We have that scalar out front. I'll do the right thing and write absolute value of the scalar first. And then we take the square root of the sum of the squares of each of the components. So that's going to be u squared sine squared v plus u squared cosine squared v plus 1. OK, and then since u is between 0 and 1, the absolute value of u is just u. And then since sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, we're left with uh, u squared plus 1 inside of the radical. All right, so our surface area computation is ready to go. This is going to be the double integral over the domain. So let me write 0 to 2 pi for the v parameter and 0 to 1 for u. 1 times this length, so u square root of u squared plus 1 du dv. I want to do a u substitution here, but I'm already using the letter u. So I'm going to use w. So we'll let what's inside the radical be w. So if w is u squared plus 1, dw is 2u du. Or in other words, what we see inside of the integrand u du will get replaced with 1 half dw. I'm also going to recognize that this integrand is only with respect to u. And since the bounds of this double integral are constant, and I can factor this integrand into a, a function of u times a function of v, which is just going to be treated as the number 1. I can write this as the product of two single integrals, so 0 to 2 pi, 1 dv, times what's now going to be rewritten in terms of w as 1 half w to the 1 half dw. Let's change our bounds. When u is 0, w is 1. When u is 1, w is 2. OK, the integral of 1 from 0 to 2 pi returns the length of that domain. So that's going to be 2 pi minus 0, or 2 pi. Now if I anti-differentiate w to the 1 half, I get w to the 3 halves 
I want that three halves to come down, cancel out with something to leave me one half. So I think I should have a leading one third. Now we need to evaluate that from one to two. Okay, what I'm going to do as well is pull that one third out and write the final answer as two pi over three times two to the three halves. So that's two squared times two to the one half. We can write two square root of two minus one to the three halves, which is one. So that is the surface area of the saddle surface trapped inside of the cylinder of radius one.